Well, good morning, everybody. I am about to do a little demo here um, using some rulers and some organic quilting. And I'm struggling with a microphone hairband and a pair of specs. So bear with me while I stitch the top of my piece on. I think the sound's a little bit crackly, sorry. Um, so I'm using a piece of, can you hear me, fake leather. It's not the real kind, it's kind of plastic. Therefore, I don't need a specialized needle. This sort of thing is what I shall make into a toilet bag or something later. You never know what this will end up as. So I'm just stitching down the sides and I'll be onto the fun stuff any second now. Ooh. Whoops, except I don't quite know what the buttons are doing because this is not my very own machine. But I'll get the hang of it quite soon. I'd rather use my teacher voice because I'm not convinced people can actually hear me. Okay, down the side. Lovely, lovely shiny fabric. If it wasn't this leather, it'd be gold lame or something glitzy. I shouldn't wonder. There we go. And I'll just tie that off. Ready to go. So I've actually pre-marked some shapes on this piece here um, using a friction pen. I'm using a friction pen, uh, which is a, a pen that disappears with a bit of heat. They're a bit controversial in the quilt world, but... Um, is this sound actually working? Okay. You can. So this is a friction pen. Some people really don't like them because the marks can come back, but um, I'm quite happy with them because I usually stitch over them so that you can't see anything that's left. So I've drawn some shapes onto my piece of pleather, faux leather, and uh, I've got some templates that I drew around just roughly. The only thing to remember is that the large quarter of an inch foot adds on a quarter of an inch to the template so it might not be bang on my lines they're just guidelines I've also drawn on with some funky foam pieces that I cut out with uh, so I've just got some shapes to break this up so it's just a blank canvas with a few shapes to fill in like a skeleton and I'm just going to work on those bit by bit so the first thing I've got over here that I think I might do is a large circle. So I have a non-slip circle ruler just here. And I'll bring my thread up to the top so that it doesn't get tangled. My left hand handle has been pushed up out of the way so that I don't have to bump into it. And I've actually got a little laser pointer on because I like to see exactly where the needle is going into my fabric. So I'm in Bonina Stitch Regulated Mode number two, which means that when I stop and have a little think, the machine will stop when I click the button. So you can see that my hand's in a little bit of an awkward position there. So all I have to do is get to a point where I can stop and move my hand around so that I can get the other way. So I'm just applying, it's very awkward because I can't do left-handed myself. However, it's really nice because I can actually adjust these handles up so that I can get round any awkward spaces. They're like bicycle handles, really. It's really nifty. All the way round, all the way round. And then I will slowly creep up to where I started and stop there. Now, if this was a show quilt, I should really make the effort of stopping and uh, leaving a lovely long tail so that I could sew that in later, but I'm simply not going to bother. So, what I think I might do, rather than do a bit of a stop start, I think I'll just do some fillers in the big part of the circle here until I get to the middle part of the circle, and then I'm going to do something else. So, how about some little curly swirls just to fill that section in? So here we go. Oop. Now what I might do again, because I'm going to do some fillers now, 
I might just bring my handles back again where I can reach them. I really like the fact that you can do that on this machine rather than have the machine fixed up like a motorbike. So I can push them in to suit my own preference. And I like to have my hands really close to the piece of work so that I can see what I'm doing. So I think I'm going to work in manual now just to do some filler. But I don't go very fast in manual. I'm going to go around about 560 stitches per minute and see how I get on. So just some little swirly things going on to fill in the spaces. I love working in manual. It's so smooth. But if I was too frightened to do that, I could still run it in a BSR mode. And to get around the tight turns, all you have to do is request more stitches per inch so you can get around the tight, tiny curls. So I'm just doing a few swirls around the edge. And then, when I get suitably close to that middle circle, I'll do something else. But this is what I call organic quilting. There's a little bit of a plan, but it's not terribly specific. And you can hear how quietly this machine's just purring away nicely. And the good thing about the fake leather, or gold lame, come to think of it, is the, the texture that it gives you is just gorgeous. It's a little bit like uh, beaten Viking metal, I think. So I like to just try and get as much done as I can without doing a stop and restart because I can't be bothered with fiddling about with tails of thread. And nobody wants to see me stand here and trim bits off. It's not so entertaining anyway. So here we are. I'm just, I think it, this is kind of looking a little bit like a Viking shield at the moment. It's a bit mesmerizing, actually. You, it's very easy to lose yourself in uh, quilting and stand there and think, oh, gosh, I've been here three hours now. So I just tend to put the radio on and just keep going until it's done. Now, hopefully, you see, my problem is that I like to work small, so it does take me a while to get somewhere. But it's purring away, purring away. Now, of course, obviously, this type of quilting can also be done on a domestic machine as well. It's just that I find this more intuitive because the machine is like a huge pen and the, the fabric, the material, is like the piece of paper which is fixed. Whereas if you're trying to quilt with a domestic machine, uh, it's a little bit like rubbing your tummy and your head at the same time. You're moving the paper under the pencil. So once you get used to it, it's up to your personal preference, I guess. The other thing I love about this machine is that I can add little um, different accessories. Any of the accessories I've got for the domestic banana, I can use various couching feet. So I can go around all of my shapes later in a glitzy thick cord, perhaps. Or even use a twin needle, because I can add a twin needle plate to this. So that's really rather nice. Okay, I have now reached the middle circle. So I could use a template to get around there, but I am just going to wing it round the circle. Uh, hopefully fairly round, not too wobbly, so off it goes. I can go around a couple of times if I want some definition. 
but I'm going to stop at the top because if I can remember mathematically, I'm going to try and draw a star in the middle. So I'm going to use the ruler again, for which I have to shove the handle out of the way. And uh, I usually mark some little lines or even numbers, but the idea is that I'm going to miss out two points and see if I can get a star going on in here. So wish me luck with that. Down to there. Miss out the next two points. I'm using my quarter inch ruler. Can I even see? Oh yeah, here we go. My quarter inch ruler is not slipping because I have attached some skateboard tape to the bottom of it. But also I have to tell you that this fabric is not at all slippery. And uh, I'm getting some lovely texture going on. There's the next point of my star. I don't know how that's looking on the camera. Uh, where do we go next? Nearly there. And back up to that one, which I think looks quite nice. Now, I could stop and start there, or I could just sneak out over the top of something else that I've already quilted, which I think I'd rather do, and then do something a bit jazzy around the outside before moving on to my next shape. So we'll just pretend to sneak out of my circle that way, and then I might have some spikes on it. Oh, it's reminding me of something off Game of Thrones now. I would love to have done the costumes on that program. You do need to leave a bit of negative space on a quilt, but I do find that a bit of a battle. Just to add poof every now and again. So as you can see, I've got some spikes going around here. A little bit like dragon's teeth or something. They don't have to absolutely match each other. In fact, they look more uh, natural if they don't. Here we go. Uh, I forgot to mention that I've actually got foot number 72 on here, which is the foot that is also suitable for the domestic machine. Now, I've wiggled out of that space there simply because I don't really want to have to stop and start with a new piece of thread. So I'll just keep going round. There's a very vague plan, but it's, very to it's totally freestyle, which is why I call it organic. It just, whatever happens, happens. So then we just roughly echo around there again. See the texture building up quite nicely. But I drew the shapes on earlier, but I don't have to use those shapes. They were just an, an approximate placement in case I thought that that's where they wanted to go. But if they don't work, then they don't have to happen. So I'm going to come around again. And I want to get to this star here. Now, this star's more or less got little straight sides, but if I think I can go around it manually, I will. So I'm probably going to reduce the speed down even more because I'm in no rush, and it makes it easy to see what you're doing. So here we go. Little star coming along here. Here it goes. I'll just stop and have a think. Now, the handy thing with the uh, quarter inch foot, of course, is that it's a quarter of an inch from the needle to the outer edge of the foot. So you can actually use that as a measurement to go around again. So let's see if I can do that fairly accurately. Here it goes. I'm using the foot to measure how far away I am from that previous line of quilting. So that I've got a double star going on now. And I can even do it again, like that, and again, 
And then I meet back to where I was and have a little pause and think, okay, back into the uh, slightly faster manual mode because I'm going to do some pebbles until I reach the next point that I want to go to. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm in my favorite manual mode, but in a minute I'll just switch over to PSR so you can see how that can be done regulated as well. I've had plenty of practice, so hopefully my stitches tend to be quite consistent in manual. It is a matter of practice. It's not, it's not difficult, but it's not something that you learn to do instantly within five minutes. Just going to speed my manual up a bit. Off it goes. I do tell people that it's a bit like learning how to do lovely joined handwriting at primary school. You don't learn how to do it on day one. It's a thing that you build up with practice. But once you've got the hang of it, there's no stopping you. So I'm just pebbling around this star. And as soon as you get fed up with the, uh, or not fed up with, but as soon as you think, oh, I've had enough of this pebbling malarkey, you can just go off on a tangent and do a different design instead. So I'm going to work on a couple of my bigger motifs, some of which are freehand and some of which have to be done with a template, just like the circle was. So here it goes. I'm hoping that I'm going to be reaching my paisley design shortly. But the thing with the paisley, I've decided, is that it looks rather nice with a bit of a frill around it. So I'm actually going to do that first. Make it look a little bit Bollywood style. There it goes. All of these marks will disappear later on. I'll just get a hairdryer or a heat gun on them. Uh, they can also rub off. So it's a bit tight in there. And I'm echoing around my Bollywood paisley because it looks cool. I'll just fudge it around there and then I'm going to sneak in, do the actual body of the Paisley. I'm not doing it with a template, I could. Round there and then I'm just going to do a little bit of a stitch in there that makes it look a tiny bit like hand embroidery. I hope it will anyway. As usual, I'm thinking, why didn't I do that a tiny bit bigger? But it will look nice when it's done. Here we go. I kind of call this uh, long arm embroidery or even long arm drawing, I suppose. But I'm emulating a hand stitch. Of course, while I'm thinking, or not thinking, while I'm dozing my way around here, I'm thinking, oh, what am I going to do in the middle of that paisley? Health and safety warning, you shouldn't put your fingers too close to the needle. Do what I say, not what I do. It's leather, fake leather. So I don't need a leather needle, this is just a standard needle. It sews very nicely. Now, I need someone from the audience to shout, what are you going to do in that paisley? I haven't always decided what's going to happen in advance, you see. 
about 10 years. Mostly all day, every day. So I've reached there, and now I have to have a little bit of a plan. What's going to go on inside? Well, hmm. I think we will have some spikes. Why not? So I'm going to spike my way round. All in manual. And of course, you can be very critical of your own work when you've got your nose right over it, six inches above it. But when you stand back, it generally looks rather nice. I could stop there and then put something else in the middle section down here. How about some more bubbles? No, change my mind. I'm into spirals. Now, I'm going to get a different ruler out in a minute because I fancy a change. So when I've done this lovely pear-shaped Bollywood paisley, I will come out and fill in another bit of space somewhere else. So we just have to fill this in and think of where we're going to go next. But I'm going to sneak out on a line-ish. Do a little bit of a wiggle off somewhere. And what I really want to do is work my way back to the middle so I can get a different ruler out without stopping. It's a bit of a challenge. I used to really enjoy that thing at primary school where the teacher said, take your pencil for a walk. One of my favorite things. This looks like uh, ripples on the sand now. Everybody's personal free motion quilting is like their individual style, their own handwriting. You can look at some people's quilts who are well known and think, oh yeah, I know who did that. It is really quite an individual trait. So we'll just fill in this little gap here. It's definitely practice. So I'm trying to work my way over to a nice big space because I fancy grabbing a different ruler. And I'm going to stop. I'm going to put it back into BSR mode number two now for ruler work. And uh, I'm going to grab this one. I got this uh, ruler from my friends over at Quilt Direct. It's a, uh, what is it? Quilter's Groove Ruler, actually. I think this is a bird chain. It's a funny thing. It looks a little bit like um, a minaret. So we'll just have a go with that. Right, so a little bit of downward and inward pressure with my ruler, and I'm going to go round this curve very slowly into the steep indentation, and it actually makes a beautiful point. But you have to slow down once you get into that bit. And then what you do is stop it, and then turn it round. Whoop. Hopefully, I will match it up where it belongs. If I was doing a quilt that needed a, a certain amount of accuracy, I would probably have um, marked some grids out onto my piece. So I'm going to sneak slowly into that indentation. Very slowly, and that's when I get my sharp point. Now, you'll see that this is a, a little bit of an awkward shaped template. I must make sure that I move my hand so that my hand is controlling the template all the time. And then I will meet the end. It, it's an OG, I suppose. So I'm. <laughs> it's okay. Now, I have to make a bit of a decision on what happens inside this OG now. Um, 
I think we'll have something a little bit frilly. And it could look like a Christmas decoration. Or not. We shall see. Okay. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. You want a nice flat surface. Yeah. If I was going to be doing any ruler work on a domestic machine, I would always have the domestic machine sunk into a table. It does make life an awful lot easier. Now, I've not gone straight across with my little bumpy ruler. I've just randomly rearranged it. I'm getting a bit of a cloud shape, I suppose you could say. I go right to the edge of the shape, and then I move forward by about a quarter of an inch, because that's the distance from the needle to the edge of the foot. And I go across the other way. So it's a little bit of a dragon scale type of thing. Totally random. Nobody else will have one like it. Enough to just stop it slipping. Not much. So I think my OG is finished. If I look at it later on and think, eh, it's got a few gaps, I might just go in and put some lines in it. So freehand. Now, my paisley is not now where I thought it was going to be, which is fine. I can just do something else. So I could do half a paisley. I'm going to do some pebbles up to this flowery shape, and then I'm hoping to do that paisley up there. Let's see what happens. I appear to be back in my favorite manual mode, but not speedy. I'm quite sure that I was once told, oops, I kind of, uh, oh dear, went off on a bit of a tangent then. I have strayed into my OG, which wasn't deliberate, but I am now going to make it look like a purposeful design feature. Nobody will know if I don't tell them. So I need to define the fact that that was deliberate by doing a bit of a flouncy edge. Very technical term, that. I like to tell people I have a feather phobia, or I'm allergic to them. I don't do feathers. Plenty of other people can do feathers. There's no need for me to work on them. It's probably a peacock feather that I'm developing here now. That's what I'm going to say anyway. Here's the flower. Ish. Flower-ish. Uh, it was a Frixion pen. Oh, yeah. You see, I was kind of thinking this was going to be a flower, but it now looks like a coffee filter. But that's okay. I obviously meant it to do that. I'll give it a little curl here so that it looks less like a coffee filter and more like a flower. Here we go. I could always sew a button on that later. It would look like, um, what do you call that thing in the middle of the flower, all where the stamens go? That bit. I mean, if I had all day with this and you left me to my own devices, I would probably... Um, start adding further lines and extra stitching, all sorts of stuff. Get a bit carried away, really, until someone pushes me out of the way. Yeah. It's addictive. Very good, very good. Usually the only thing that stops me quilting is actually running out of thread. I 
just stand there all day or sit on my little stool with wheels. It's quite relaxing. Ignoring the phone. So where are we now? We need to head up to that Paisley, so perhaps I'd better do some bigger stuff so that I can reach it. Here it is. Going freehand around it, trying not to lose my specs and microphone. Here it is. I'd like to give it a bit of a frill. Whoop. My challenge will be for all the people who come by to fill in the gaps. There's one line of humps. Here it goes. Round do we go again? Nearly complete. The second round. And then, well, I think we better have some little infill because it just looks incomplete without it. There's my long arm drawing slash hand embroidery look. All the time thinking, um, how am I going to finish the inside, I wonder? Maybe we'll have some frills on the inside, you never know. This is my attempt at uh, some kind of embroidery stitch, but I don't do very much hand sewing, so I'm definitely not an e expert on that subject. I think I might do something that looks like a blanket stitch going on the inside because I think that would look quite cool. Uh, blanket stitch. Oh yeah, that goes like that. Sort of thing. It's very interesting where quilters get their um, design inspirations from. You can take photos of manhole covers. Tattoo shops can be quite a cool place to hang out. They've got some great patterns in their portfolios. Fabrics, all sorts of things. But you can see the texture building up on this uh, pleather. It's very nice. Here it goes. Need to put something in the middle, but not too much because then I lose the sense of um, texture altogether and it just becomes a little bit too busy. But we're nearly there with it. And I think. I'm just going to have a few pebbles in the middle just because. Maybe even some spirals for interest. Not 
don't want to fill it in completely. And I'm just going to fill it in and then creep out across the line there. But the quilt police weren't watching, so I got away with it. Little ripple effect in there just to fill it in. And I really want to get myself out to the edge so that I can have a breather. Just a little time. It's always a case of, oh, just five minutes more, five minutes more. I'll be there three hours later. But look, there's only, there's only an inch left, so we'll just fill it in. Just fill it in. And if you listen carefully, uh, once you're experienced, you'll start to think, oh, I think that bobbin might be getting a bit low. There we are. That'll do for now. How's that?